Have you wanted to take a DNA test? Well, today I'm going to show you how. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics. And I'm Devin, his wife. She's also with Family History Fanatics. And, oh yeah, that's true. And this is a segment of DNA. <laughs> yeah, he normally does it. I'm just here for... to look pretty. <laughs> I had a great idea, and we actually had some of the viewers of our live stream that contributed to this. Absolutely. So let me tell you what you're going to see today. We have lots of people that comment on our videos, and one of the things that people comment on several of the DNA videos is that it's all a scam, that the companies are just making stuff up when they say it to you, or that oh, all they're doing is just looking at your family tree and then providing information based on that, or what? whatever. And they say, if you did the test twice at different times with different names, then it's probably going to come up with completely different results. Mm-hmm. Well... Guess what? Are what? You gonna do? Today, we're going to start one of two parts because we're going to take the test today and then we're going to analyze the test in two months when they get it back to us and show you that no, it, that's they're not just making this stuff up. It's actually real stuff. <laughs> so today, we're going to be taking, actually, we're not, I'm going to be taking an ancestry, there it is, an ancestry DNA test. Now, I've already tested with ancestry. I did and, too. And that was about a year and a half ago. Yep. So, this is the same person, me, mm -hmm. with the same company, ancestry, at different times. Yep. And using different information. So, let me show you what I've done to get started. So, first off, one of the complaints that people have is that Companies like Ancestry are using information that they already know about you to make up information. So what I've done is I have created a whole new me. Really? Um, yeah. Did I marry someone different? You did today. Oh, okay. So I have a new Gmail account and I created a new Ancestry account that is not related to any of my other accounts at all. In fact, I don't use it for anything else. I've not put a tree up here. I've not connected to anything. Nothing. These are both completely clean accounts. Okay. So Ancestry can't use information that they already know about me because it's already there. Now, number two, some people are going to say already, yeah, well, you're making this video and you're posting it. So Ancestry is going to watch the video and they're going to know it's you. And so they're going to go and find the information about you before. And then they're going to just send you that. <laughs> Except... Ancestry doesn't know whether or not the kit I send in was the spit of me, the spit of her, the spit of our dog, the spit of our neighbor, or the spit of somebody else. And you're not going to find out until two months from now. Right now, we're just going to pretend like it's the spit of me. And yeah, you're going to see me spitting in a kit. We're going to pretend or are you going to spit? I'm going to spit. Okay. But I have lots of other kits. And you don't know which one I'm going to send into Ancestry. Mm -hmm. dun, dun, dun. So I've got this kit, and the first thing we do is open it. Now I will say that I bought this kit with about 10 other kits. So it's not even like Ancestry has a specific kit that they sent to me, and so they know, and so they're expecting this. Um, but inside this kit, you can see Ancestry gives you the instruction booklet. And on the back of that is the code that we're going to need. So we'll keep that handy here. Yeah, can't show it. No showing Ancestry because then people are going to say that you showed it to them. I don't mind. I'm showing Ancestry. And you know what? Ancestry, you don't know whether this is her spitting or me spitting. Mm -hmm. And I love it with the green screen because you can see the bottom of that gets <laughs> cut off. It's pretty awesome. That is pretty cool. We have our collection bag. Mm-hmm. We have the, the spit vial, spit vial. Mm -hmm. and we have the packaging to send this back. Oh, don't show them the numbers. We can, because again, they don't know if it's me that's spitting that's putting this in, mm -hmm. or if it's you that's spitting that's putting this in. And the nice little gift box we can throw away. So now he's going to start opening the package, and one of the things you need to be aware of is that you don't want to eat or drink at least 30 minutes before you take the test because they, you could mess up your test and get a false read and have to do it all over again, which would make things more confusing. 
Now with Ancestry, they use a spit test. So you're actually going to be spitting into this little tube. Mm -hmm. They have a little uh, cup holder on the top to help funnel the spit in. Mm -hmm. And then you have a cap that you're going to put on after you have spit. After. So yeah, don't after. put this cap on before you spit. If you mess up, it will still work, but just do it after. So he's going to begin spinning. The other thing is, is it has the code on the, the barcode on the side of it that you can match up to make sure that it is the same code. Oh, that would be kind of confusing if it wasn't. All right, so now we're going to spit, and you gotta time me to see if I can spit faster than anybody else. Now, how much spit do you need? Well, not that much. If you look at the vial there, there is a little line right there that tells you where you gotta fill that spit up to. Now, that doesn't mean you're filling up this whole vial with spit because the amount actually starts just below that line, so it's really only a few milliliters, but Surprisingly, it does take a lot of spit to fill up that little bit of millimeters. So we're gonna time me and see how long it takes me to spit. I'm ready. All right, go. All right, now our youngest son, Cinco, he did this in 30 seconds or less. We've had other people who have taken probably five to 10 minutes because spitting isn't actually as easy as it sounds, the believe first, it or not. The first spit was easy. It's all the rest of the spits that aren't so easy. <laughs> it's conjuring it up if you have dry mouth and you can't just get some more water to get saliva going. You have to keep it straight. So if you do happen to have family members who are unable to spit, then you might want to check a different testing company to gather their DNA through a swab test. How's it going? Well, so you're when talking. you're doing this, <laughs> when you're doing this, you want to make sure that the liquid fills up a, to that line or above and not just the bubbles. And I think, I think I got that. All right. And it took him 40 seconds. Not Ooh. bad. Your son was still faster. Yeah, he was, he was super fast. <laughs> I think when you're young and you're a boy, spit is like your favorite thing to do. So the next part then is to take your funnel off. So now that I got that done, what I need to do is I need to put the cap on. Don't mess up. So center it on and then screw it on. And when you're doing that, yeah, there. It should put the preservative from the top into the bottom. Just shake it up for good measure. And it's time to put it in a bag. Seal it up and send it on its way. You just took off the sticker for the bag. So don't seal up the bag prematurely like Devin was trying to do. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. Oh, you know what we need to do before we send it off on its way? You got it. We in need the code. to register the kit. Yes. So back at Ancestry, we're going to go and register our kit. In our profile, we want to discover our ancestry DNA. Mm. And when we go on that, we're going to activate a kit. And you will know that this happened two months later because we'll show you that little ad. So and it's going to say, we want to continue? Yeah, we want to continue. And this is me. It sounds like a song. This is me. And now it's saying, hey, enter in the code from what we had here. But it's on the card if you it's seal it It's on the card it. if you've already <laughs> sealed it up. Which is why you should compare the card and the vial before you start sealing things up. Once you put in the activation code, it's going to tell you that you have a valid activation code. Hooray! Then we can click next. And it wants us to enter our birth year. Did you just make something up? I did. But it was a, a, of the age in order to participate? It was, absolutely. And then tell us a little about yourself. I'm a male. Well, we should probably to be honest about that. It lets me know, hey, do I have my consent? Yes, I have my consent. It's going to identify me as being me, probably. And then it asked me for some more consent, knowing that, hey, do you want to participate in research? And in this case... I have read this informed consent. And honestly, right here, I don't want to include this in research because this is my second kit, so there's no reason to include it in research. Normally, I would give consent, but in this case, I'm not going to give my consent. Next, 
it's going to ask about new family connections. Would you like to see your DNA matches and be listed as a match? Absolutely, because that's the whole point of this. <laughs> and what information do I want to do, show? I want to show my complete ethnicity, geographic, and cultural origins. And then it has the details. Is that me? Blah, 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 blah. Yes. And I want to unclick the receive weekly emails because I don't want to receive any more emails <laughs> about my DNA results every week. It's going to take about six to eight weeks to get this back. Success! Your DNA kit is now activated. Do you want to receive text updates? No, I don't. But if you do, that's okay. Now that we've registered everything, we can put it in the box. Make sure that it's sealed up. Yep, you got that. You have to put it in at an angle. Is there something in the box? <laughs> the last box that they had. It's a little more complex. You've got to stuff it in there. And now the box is sealed up. And again, Ancestry doesn't know whether I'm actually sending them this box or if I'm sending them another box. But it's ready to send off to Ancestry. So what do I think is actually going to happen? Well, I'll be honest. I'm 100% certain that they're going to match me with me. Yay! So I will see at the top of my match list myself. Now, the ethnicity results, that's a good thing to question there. I think it's going to be pretty darn close. I would guess that it might vary by 1% or less. Ooh, what if you're wrong? Now, some people may ask, why is that going to vary at all? And it's just because they're doing a statistical analysis of all the data. Now, each test is going to have some small amount, you know, probably less than half a percent or even less than 0.1% of the different markers that are called incorrectly or not able to be called at all. And so that's the difference between this test that I'm sending in right now and the test that I've already sent in. But what you're saying, what you're predicting, is that you will not be Japanese. I am predicting almost certainly I'm not going to be Japanese, which, since you bring that up, we're going to test the other thing that people say and that they use information on the tree to determine your ethnicity. And Devin here, over the next two months or week or whatever, is going to create a tree for me on this account. And on that tree, there'll be some names that have nothing to do with my family. But they are all going to be from either Africa, okay, Japan, China, the Asia, Asia, um, Samoa, Samoa. Ooh, okay, I gotta um, look up Samoa names. And and maybe even Russia because I don't have any Russian in my history. So you have you have those things basically. Ooh, Western Europe. You can't can it do. be a famous Russian? It can be whoever you want. Okay. And so what we'll have created is we'll have created an account that has a completely bogus family tree from different places in the world that I am definitely not related to. Mm -hmm. And you will see that, yeah, when they analyze the DNA, it's still going to show that my ethnicity results are almost identical to the ones that I already took. And when I go and I download that raw file and actually compare them side by side, since this is the exact same test, you're going to see out of that 700,000 markers, my guess is less than 0.1% of them are different. And that's just because of the way that the processing works in order to call and identify what those values are. Okay. So, tune in in two months to find our surprise reveal. And if you have any questions about taking a DNA test... Put it in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let your friends know about it.